Good morning, everyone. I'm Christy Connor, the host of Friday Coffee Meetup. We are happy to be here with you on Juneteenth, celebrating the liberation of slaves that were held in the US, and we're grateful that you're here with us today. Friday Coffee Meetup is the largest active innovation entrepreneurial tech meetup in Los Angeles, California, with about 7,000 members. We are currently virtual due to COVID-19, but we're looking forward to seeing everyone's faces when we get back to our traditional programming in person. Although you are seeing my face right now, there is actually a whole host of people uh, that come together to put this on every week, and I'd like to share them with you this morning. So this is our team here, and they do so many different things from getting speakers to all the logistics to running our open networking after. We are sponsored by Echo Factory, and we are grateful for their support as well. So this is the amazing team. You have no idea the amount of effort it takes um, from all of them to make us a success each week, and I'm so grateful for all of their efforts. I'm also grateful for you, our members, for joining us each week to learn, to promote innovation in the community. So thank you for joining us as well. There is some information for you in the chat box. Please take a look at that. Um, we have information about Friday Coffee Meetup. We have a podcast channel and a YouTube channel where you can check out videos from our speakers from a number of years, videos and podcasts. So check those out you'll learn many great things. We've been really lucky to have a great set of speakers across the years. We will be having after meeting net open networking. So if you'd like to stay for that, please stick around and we will pull you over into the panelist panel and allow you guys to speak, maybe ask some extra questions of Elizabeth this morning. She is going to stay on with us as well. And we are going to be having Q&A today after the presentation itself. So after Elizabeth speaks, Q&A will be handled via the Q&A panel. The chat window is not moderated, so be on your best behavior there. Don't put your questions there, but go ahead and put those into the Q&A panel. And I will go ahead and ask them, be as, as succinct as possible. If I have a paragraph, I might not read it. Um, but we hope to get to all of your questions and apologize in advance if we don't get to your question. I am so pleased to have this amazing woman and my friend Elizabeth Eichhorn with us here this morning. She is with iFund Women, and you also might recognize her from the Ampersand Dinners, networking, bringing together great community at those dinners. So if you haven't checked those out before, check those out as well. She is gonna to talk to us about why smart women are crowdfunding. iFund Women is a nationally, internationally recognized as a crowdfunding industry leader for female founders and creators. She herself is a startup coach, <clears throat> excuse me, startup coach helping those women achieve success in their businesses. She herself is a two-time female founder who's successfully raised capital via crowdfunding to get their businesses off the ground, to get her businesses off the ground. With that, we are so pleased to have her here with us this morning. I am going to stop sharing and turn it over to Elizabeth. Welcome, Elizabeth. Um, thank you, Christy. Good morning, everybody. I am going to also start screen sharing with you as well. Um, I am excited to be here and I'm excited to tell you all about crowdfunding. I fund women and I, like Christy said, am a two-time founder who, <laughs> decided to start my businesses and work on doing my businesses uh, or funding my businesses through crowdfunding initially. At the time that I was crowdfunding, there was not a platform that was specifically for women entrepreneurs. And at the time I was running a food company that was so difficult to try to figure out how to get funding for. So it was for those who have dietary restrictions, um, and it was before the gluten-free craze actually happened. So um, I did successfully raise on Kickstarter. And I remember being one of only 3% is what the statistics came out to be of women who crowdfunded for a food company on Kickstarter. 
And because of that, I remember having a few presentations. I think it was actually through Innovate Pasadena that I did a few presentations. There used to be another meetup that they did um, about crowdfunding. And so my, my journey with crowdfunding began there. And I wish, I wish that I Fund Women had continued or was a part of um, around at the time that I said when I was crowdfunding. But this is welcome to I Fund Women. And I, like Christy said, I am one of the startup coaches and I actually opened our West Coast office. We are a New York based company, but um, I opened our West Coast office in January. And so today I'm going to be talking about why smart women are crowdfunding. So who is I Fund Women? So I Fund Women is for women who have big ideas and we're here to help make them happen. We're a startup funding platform providing access to capital through crowdfunding and grants, expert business coaching on all the topics entrepreneurs need to know about, and a network of women business owners that sparks confidence, accelerates knowledge, and ignites action. That's what I Fund Women is all about. And so today we're going to talk to you about the reason as to why we even started. So the problem that we are solving. So the problem is only 1% of people, no matter their gender, will ever raise venture capital. So what are the 99% of us supposed to do? So you have options. A lot of us may know the option tree and the, plat or the path that a lot of people go down. You have self-funding and credit cards, which I know, oh, a lot about. You have grants, but for those of you who have applied to grants, um, you know that especially being a, a for-profit business can be really difficult to find grants that actually fit with your business. You have small business loans, which I know that before I came on, John and I were speaking about small business loans in the SBA, and um, they can be great if you qualify for some of those loans. You have crowdfunding, which is what we'll talk about, and then you have equity investors. So uh, this is really how you're going to get some funding for your business. So, but today we're gonna really talk about crowdfunding. So what exactly is crowdfunding? I know that we've heard of Kickstarter. I know, especially here in Pasadena, um, we have things like the Oculus. That was, um, I believed it was initially started here, or maybe it was in Orange County, but I know in Southern California for sure. <clears throat> so the VR headsets and we ended up, they ended up going on to Kickstarter. They're fantastic to be able to raise money for products, especially tech products. Um, and they actually started out of the, out of kind of the recession, the 2008, 2009 recession was when crowdfunding really started. And so what is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding is when you raise small increments of money from lots of people that you know that adds up to just enough money to achieve your specific goal. So I stress this over and over and over and over again, that last line, achieve a specific goal. Crowdfunding is usually should be that first step of your funding your business. The reason why is that we believe here at iFund Women no one should have to go into debt funding their early years of their business. Crowdfunding allows you the opportunity to actually set that specific goal, but also remember this is not $3 million that you're trying to raise. This is absolutely those spaces where you're like, what is the hurdle that I have in front of me? And how can I, what is that money that I'm looking for to help over? Um, get over that one particular hurdle, specific hurdle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here are a few reasons why people are crowdfunding. So it's not just to raise capital, but it's also to prove demand for a product, to build your prototype, to pre-tail or pre-sell your product or service, to drive sales and marketing for your company, to raise a pre-seed round before you actually do go into that uh, seed round or your series A, to build buzz and awareness. Um, maybe your business, you don't want venture capital or maybe you don't qualify for it or avoid going into debt. I'm going to give you a few examples of each of these on the iFund Women and we'll 
who we have actually helped get to crowdfund and raise successfully. Um, so I'm going to take you through a few campaigns and specifically show you why crowdfunding has helped these specific women. Um, so this is Taylor J. She's a fashion designer in Oakland, California. She wanted to prove demand before she invested in supply. So for instance, she, she actually thought she wanted to make this a pl uh, plus size clothing line. She already had a clothing line. She wanted to add um, another collection. And she realized that she didn't want to invest money into this until she decided, well, maybe I want to see if people would really want this. So she raised funds, started a crowdfunding campaign with us, raised over $30,000. But the thing that I want you to pay attention to is look at the funders. This is actually proving demand. And when you are starting a business, you need numbers. You need to know your data. And you need to understand that this data is important for you as you're building out your next collection for a clothing line or whatever your next, um, your next product will be. Um, this is for our awesome, the, I mean, we were talking about outdoors before, this, uh, before I got on the presentation too. This is Outdoor Ninja. Uh, Janisha and Matt raised money on iFund Women because they were wanting to build a prototype um, of their tech product. And it's very similar to Meetup, but um, it was specifically for the outdoors. So you would connect with people outdoors to then go hiking together, be able to go climbing together. And you, they wanted to actually see if this would work and to build their prototype. So they raised the funds that they needed. And then the cool thing what they did is they turned those 134 funders into their beta testers. And they sent them back um, a survey asking them what they should change, understanding what they needed help. And so instead of going out and looking for these people and looking for the funds, these people funded their product and they got to have a voice within their product too. Um, so she fly is, I, some of you may know this product. They started out at iFund Women, you may not, um, but they, um, are a company that is all about getting, um, allowing women to have access to relieve themselves in the outdoors, um, when they're hiking, going outdoors. Um, and so their product, they needed to, they were starting to pre-sell it, um, through, I fund women and through a campaign rather than through just an e-commerce site. Another reason why people do that is because of marketing and the importance of being able to utilize a larger platform when you are a small business. So I think they're actually even still raising funds too. They're a cool company. Um, so you can raise more than just the thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and the Coven is a great example of that. However, the Coven also raised before pre, like was pre-COVID. So I do want to stress that when people are trying to think, well, I really want to raise this amount of money. It's not to say you can't. It's to also understand where the market is right now and what you're actually raising for. The Coven is a community and workspace in Minneapolis, and they also just opened one in St. Paul. And they were looking to start raising funds to help with their brick and mortar. And so they were actually driving sales and marketing through a membership. And so they utilized crowdfunding to set up a reward system. And one of their rewards happened to be a membership that was selling for $1,500 for the full year and because they didn't actually have the brick and mortar and because they were trying to figure out what to do they actually partnered with spaces and local community um, businesses to partner with events and like i said this is pre-covid so they could make that work but it was um, being able to do events We've also seen people do something very similar do, during COVID where they do virtual events with people and partner with them. So um, as you see here, they raised over $300,000 on our platform. And Alex, 
um, actually was on Ink Magazine last year. Um, so we got her to Ink Magazine with three other entrepreneurs here at iFund Women um, as uh, the top um, female entrepreneurs to watch. Um, Lorelei has a listen bar. Um, I really want Pasadena or LA to have this. If we do have one of these, let us know in the after. But this is a uh, New York based booze free bar and they do, um, so they sell tickets on here. What is really cool with Lorelai is she actually was able to utilize her platform and she was featured on the Today Show, Good Morning America, and in the New York Times. Her campaign is still running, I believe. She might have just stopped last week. But the other thing she did is that because most of us, you know, are going into bars, um, are doing the takeaway bars from home during COVID, she also decided instead of just doing that, she was going to be partnering with um, very large well-known musicians and she actually ended up partnering with um the new york phil for a she's a very incredible person uh to do a listen because you're listening to music and be able to have your booze free cocktail at the same time so crowdfunding is really important to think about as it helps you get to that next goal and raise a pre-seed round this is Lauren. Lauren initially had um, wanted to crowdfund with us. She's actually crowdfunded a few times with us. And she decided initially she was going to do put on a dance camp for um, kids with special needs. And it was a huge success the first year. She only needed something like $12,000 and she absolutely raised that. And she came back to us the next year saying, I want to do this again. And I want to, like, honestly, I want to keep doing crowdfunding because I love what we're about. And I don't want to have to go into debt to fund this. What do I do to help get like that six figure number? So we worked with her and we did something what we call a network map, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and so she realized that she used to work for a pure bar and she was just like a manager, like a local manager of one of the pure bar locations. But she decided um, she'd reach out to the owner and CEO of pure bar. And sure enough, they flew her out um, after she pitched her idea to them. Um, the owner flew her out, they pitched and they wrote her a $50,000 check on the spot. And I think that is the power that happens when you utilize your network and also understand who do you know or who does somebody else know that can connect you. And also if you have a really solid idea and understand, um, so like she did, she, this was not her first time doing this, it was her second time. So she already had that demand, she proved it. That is important as you're raising money, by the way. Um, so I really want to talk about Lindsay because I think that with the Innovate Pasadena leadership or um, the Pasadena community um, and especially STEM, this is something that I am really, I want us to, I don't know where she lives now, but I want her to come on and figure out how we can do that. But Lindsay has a STEM um, YouTube channel and it is for kids it's called the Fab Lab. And she realized that because it's online and because it was, was with kids, it wasn't VC appropriate. But she also started hearing about how tech companies and how people were wanting to have a more diverse voice in the STEM area. She just thought, well, what do I do? I mean, they're not funding me. Why don't I just write something about this? So sure enough, she wrote a blog post and it went into LinkedIn and um, it was talking about, you know, you all talk about how you want diversity in this space, but yet you need to show us how you want diversity. So truly put your money where your mouth is. And so 
within that and just that post alone is how she was able to raise money and Nickelodeon saw it and picked her up um, and she then now had a show on Nickelodeon. This is a LA um, woman. I don't know if anybody knows Marissa, but Marissa, um, she's over on the west side. She's fantastic. She runs uh, Infinite Flow and it is a dance company that incorporates both those who are fully able and those with disabilities to dance together. She also just received our Adidas grant as well. Um, so she was raising money and realized that the schools cannot just be the funding source alone. So she was trying to figure out ways on how can she take what she is doing into other places and needed funding to do that. Um, so she raised on us and she knew that VC was not something she was able to go after. So she came to iFund Women for help. And the last um, one I'm going to talk about is Ladies Get Paid. Ladies Get Paid is a national organization who help women recognize and utilize their voice and encourage them to use their voice so that they have a platform to go up and say, we, we should have fair wages. Um, they made the rounds a, f a year or so ago because, um, and when I say rounds, they made like uh, PR headlines because they were getting um, sued by men's, re uh, men's activists saying that what they're doing is wrong and so they needed help with their lawsuits against these men's activists. And so sure enough, they didn't know what to do. They turned to their community of women who they had been talking to and they were able to raise funds to be able to help go out of debt and avoid going out of debt. But the thing that was really important about this is that um, Claire Wasserman, their, their CEO, talked about how hard it is to ask your community for help and for money. Crowdfunding is not easy. We're not, we don't stress, we, we stress that. It is not easy, it is hard, um, but it's also worth it at the end of the day because you're not going into debt. And we want people to realize that and that we're here to help too. So the reason that we're here to help is that we believe that it's all about preparation. So unlike other crowdfunding platforms, we believe it's all about prep. We want you to be educated. We want you to understand that it's all about having a pitch that is clear and concise. You need to be able to speak to your audience, if they're in person or virtual, um, and tell them what is the problem that you are solving? Why is it that you should be doing what you're doing? You also have to learn how to network map. This is something that I, I think I, this is how I've built my career is, you have to know who you know, and you have to really write it out. But the reality is, if you don't have a good and strong network at this point, that's okay. We can help you build that, and you need to start working on building that to see who is out there who would really help fund your idea. Um, it's about reward strategy. Don't just go out and create um, rewards that have a t-shirt with your logo on them. It is not going to be something that everybody wants. So really tap into the people who you know will fund your product, but see what it is that you can give them um, as a reward that's not going to break your bank, that's going to let you have those really good margins so you can still get the funds that you need to run your business. But really think about it, be strategic, be creative. One of those women who I just showed you, she utilized her nine to five, like she was a PR agent. So she used that and she created a template for people that they could download. So it's a downloadable template. So some of you might be in a service-based business. Maybe you offer some of your services as a reward. Maybe some of you are in um, a product. Well, why don't you pre-sell your product before you launch it? And the last thing is an accountability tracker. You need to understand when you're going to launch a campaign. You need to understand your marketing and who you are going to be speaking to. 
You should not have the same pitch that you do to a VC or a banker as you would your mom, for instance. But the cool thing is, is that both of them can actually fund you through a crowdfunding campaign. So that's why it's all, it's more than just funding. So it's all about that prep. And it's also about the fact that 72% of small businesses cite that it's a lack of capital and cash flow. But it's also a lack of mentorship. 48% of people say that. And 31% say that it's a lack of support. So this is why iFund Women is successful is because we help you educate you first before you actually start crowdfunding. We're not going, sure, go ahead and start a draft campaign today, but it does take time and it does take work. It's not something that you should do overnight. So these are things that we do and it's our holistic approach. We believe that you should have a coach and you should prep you should have service, you should have creative, you should have that video, make sure that you have a video that is on a crowdfunding campaign that's about 90 seconds and really tells your story. Connect with people, network with people, and then you can actually start going after those crowdfunding, those funds, the crowdfunding or grants, but it is about preparation before you actually go and raise. So I'm looking at my time, making sure. Uh, our key takeaways from this today. Um, so before you go fundraise, I don't care if it's on crowdfunding or if it is somewhere else. These are so vital, but I do think you should do crowdfunding. Um, so you don't go into debt for those of you who are looking into it. Um, I want you to hone your pitch, work on your pitch, practice with people over and over and over again. Um, map your network. Know who is in your network who is going to support you. Know who you can talk to. And also make sure that your pitch is something that it doesn't feel like it's very salesy, but allow for it to be specific to who you're speaking to. Don't just pick a goal out of thin air if you're doing crowdfunding. It is great that we all want $3 million. I do, I know that, but the reality is if you do not have a specific goal in mind, then you're just going to try to raise money and you're not going to know where that money is going to go to. So you need to have a specific goal, create compelling rewards. What would people actually want? Be legit. At iFund Women, we are not, um, we are not GoFundMe, um, we are a, platform that really focuses on making sure like you need to have a business um, and a business account to set up uh, a crowdfunding campaign with us. Have a marketing strategy. Once again, make sure you know how you're going to be speaking to people um, about your company and why you're raising money. Invest in a professional video. I know there's probably tons of people on this call who can help with that as well. Lean into the resources. Lean into the resources that we have at iFund Women. I'll make sure that you have uh, links to iFund Women at the end. Lean into the resources of your community. Things like this, Innovate Passive, or excuse me, Friday Morning Coffee Meetup is vital for people who are trying to raise money who live locally. See what else is out there. Make the ask. It is hard to ask people for money, but I have been asking, that sounds weird. I've been asking people for money for eight years now, but um, give people the opportunity to see, don't shy. I know it can be hard, but own that. This is something that you're passionate about. Let them hear why and give them the opportunity to say, like to give you an answer because the worst thing that they can do is say no. And then lastly, don't go at this alone. As we showed you before, there's at least 31% of people who say that they lack support. So lean into those um, resources that you have, and, but lean into your community. Okay, let's go get funded. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Thank Yay! you. <laughs> it was I know. really cool to hear about all the businesses that you're helping support. Thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. We, um, I love being able to do this. 
and um, just continuing to see why people are coming here every day is it's always a little bit different of a story. It's not just so, you know, you can get funding, but it's definitely about, well, I want to utilize this for marketing or I, some people are not just at the startup phase, but some people have been doing business for, there's one woman I'm working with who's been in business for 25 years mm -hmm. and she's never had to go into, uh, it's all been self-funded. So she's going into crowdfunding now. Wow, very cool. Thanks. So our first question is, how do you support your organization as you provide these services? Oh, good question. So I fund women, uh, specific, we take 5% of the funds that are raised on our platform. We utilize PayPal and Stripe who take roughly 3%. So all together it's 8%. Um, it gets taken away from your funds. Um, and then with iFundWomen specifically, we get paid through, uh, we have brokered grants. We also have that we oversee, and then we also have our coaching. Also, do you want me to keep the screen on or do you want me to stop sharing? It's up to you. It's up to you. Um, we can keep it on so people can get your information. I've also put some of your information as well into the chat window, or you can just have it so we're chatting back and forth. What are you most comfortable with? Oh, I'll just chat with you so I can see okay. your face instead of my name. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, great. Um, John, I might need a little clarification on your first question. I think this question could go two ways. Um, but let me ask the first way that I think it, it is. Um, is Zoom or something similar a good idea to pitch to a group of potential investors? So I think you're meeting like a communication uh, avenue, a video communication avenue, or were you thinking, or was the question, should I do my pitch on something like Zoom or similar? I'll let you clarify that and then I'll ask the question. Actually, I think I'm going to go for that way. Okay. He's saying both. Okay. So let's go with the first one. Is Zoom or something similar, you know, a good idea itself to pitch to people, communication methods? Um, absolutely. I mean, telecom is like, the height of where people are investing right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a pretty simple answer. And to pitch right now, absolutely. We have, um, we're helping people with a roadshow. It's an investor roadshow currently, and it's all done virtually right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and do you also help with the transition from crowdfunding, crowdfunding to angel or to a rounds? We do. We, um, we have coaches specifically for that, but we, if you look at the, um, like the 10 point phase between a startup itself to exit, uh, we usually help cover the first six, which is all the way through that first. So like you saw, we'll help with the seed round and then you go off and find other people to help with the next. Right, and just for everybody, go ahead um, and put your questions into the Q&A panel. You can find that at the bottom in the center. Um, we're not answering questions from the chat, um, so go ahead and put those over there. In the meantime, Elizabeth, can you tell us a little bit about Ampersand and yeah. you know what inspired that and your experience with that? Absolutely. Um, so the reason I paused in my my presentation, when I said it's all about network mapping, I actually am the one who coaches on networking, um, which is not surprising for probably Christy to hear. But um, so for those of you who are on this call, I ran and started a company called the Ampersand Dinner that is all about connecting people through um, food and conversations. And the entire premise of it is actually not actually talking about what you do for a living, but coming to the table about you as a person. So what are the other things that you can connect with? And the reason I started it, because as somebody who had been in the startup world and continuing to work with people, it got tiring coming into network meetings where it was a very quick exchange of, of a business card. Now, there's definitely a there's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely believe that there's a place for that. I think though that what I was feeling is that it was like you have a business card and then you end up having to do a coffee meeting with this person and then maybe you would work together. And I just was like, what if we just like ripped every, like that bandaid off and just got down to it and said, okay, let's just have a car, like, let's just talk. And if I really like you and feel connected with you, wouldn't that make for a better 
understanding at the beginning to see if we would actually want to work together. And um, so that's why I started. I actually came home from a networking meeting one day. It was late at night and I just was, <laughs> came up with the idea and started writing questions. And this is like the beginning of 2016. And then I had four people at my first dinner. And then last year we had 1900 people through um, our dinners. Fantastic. Thanks. We have um, a question here about, do you help with the accounting side of the funding round, such as the tax implications on the funds received and the nature of that money's classification? That's a good question. We do. Um, it's weird and yes and no. We help to a point um, because our processor fees are, or our processors are PayPal and Stripe. They have people, if you have set up the money to go through PayPal or Stripe, they're going to actually be the ones to help more with that, more than just I fund women. Oh my gosh. Hi, Chuck. It's good to see him. I can't hear you yet, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I'll just see him later. I feel like Chuck has seen me, my, Chuck and Mike have both seen my journey as an entrepreneur in these last eight years. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. It's great to have the community for sure. It is. Um, tell us about your other entrepreneurial venture, the other, oh, Mary Lee other Kitchen. Founder expenses. Right. My, my Mary Lee, yeah, <laughs> why I got crowdfunded in the first place. Um, so I started a, like I said in my presentation, I started a um, food production company for those with dietary needs and um, specifically because I have celiac disease and have a corn allergy. And I started at first as a catering company, and then I started as a product line and created a cookie line and a sustainable jam line. Um, and we were like selling all of our stuff out of lavender and honey and started actually at the same time that they did here in Pasadena. Um, anyhow, so I started that. And like I said, I, I started this before the real wave that came about. Um, Anyhow, we got to a point where we were being asked to start going and looking at our products to go into Target, um, which was great. But the thing was, is there were some issues around this. And I had my first experience of really wrestling between what do you want your business to do? Um, where do you want it to grow? Um, and your ethics. So I started the business because of me and my food allergies. And I realized that as I expand, I would have to actually change the formula to meet the demands and the needs for this large corporation. Um, and I'm sorry if you heard my Slack just opened up and I apologize for that. Um, anyway, so I decided not to go that route and completely shifted and decided, okay, this is when you really come to that completion road. Like, okay. This is how far a business can really take it. Um, and you never know. I really, I mean, I wish that I knew eight years ago what I know now, but you just don't. I think that's the entrepreneurial journey. And I love, love what I did. And I continue to have recipes and there's literally photos behind my computer screen of that time. I also think though, you look at everything and you wrestle with this question of, okay, what matters most to me? And for me, it was my values. Um, and I didn't want to wake up every day feeling like I had to change my values to fit a mold that somebody else had created for me. That's powerful. How would you adjust, if at all, crowdfunding goals due to pandemic and economic concerns that people may have, would you advise addressing those concerns kind of head on, especially if you require brick and mortar space and that build out could be delayed due to things like COVID or stay at home orders? Um, 150% <laughs> agree with communication. Um, you have to communicate with people. It is vital. Um, if you are not, I mean, not only is it with COVID-19, but you also see Right now you have a huge Black Lives Matter movement happening and you also need to talk. Like if you are not utilizing the platform that you're creating and starting to just ask for money, people are going, 
to just start looking at you and with their head t- tilted a bit. They're like, what? Are you not like paying attention with what's happening in the world? And so um, you have to address that head on. We also at iFund Women have created a COVID-19 relief grant. So that is distributed once a month um, to those who um, are actually actively crowdfunding with us during that time. Got it. Tell me about one of your favorite experiences of helping these women or your experiences being kind of the startup coach. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think, I think the coolest thing is that we serve over a hundred countries. And so I was able to coach people yesterday in both Tanzania and Japan um, who are wanting to raise funds. I think the coolest thing about this and the most impactful thing is realizing that women all over the world who have incredible ideas but just don't know where to go and get funding, um, I, I can help and I can give them the resources. And that I think is what I was saying. This was not around when I was going through my initial entrepreneurship journey. And that's what's really cool is we are shifting and trying to change that conversation where I would not be able to have the kind of um, skills or business knowledge if I hadn't gone through it, if I hadn't actually had experienced that struggle of the difficulty of getting an SBA loan, the difficulty of actually crowdfunding and raising funds. Um, It's not easy. And especially when you don't have a tech product, it can be really difficult. And not all women really do. Like that's another conversation in and of itself that we could talk about. But when you are somebody who is relational and who wants to have a, a brand that is maybe more empathetic, investors don't necessarily see that as a way for the growth because they want to see growth in the brand that you're building. And if you can't present that then to them and you can't show them the numbers, it's a little bit more difficult. So, um, so that's what I get to do every day. So those are some of the things that I get to impact. Um, and I guess the other thing that I was just going to add is that it is not always the easiest thing to try to can tell people that they are not going to be a good fit for crowdfunding. Not every, it is hard. I think that's the hardest part about being a coach and about being a person who works with businesses all day long. Um, I have, I have the hard job of also saying them like, you're not ready for funding or you really need to figure out, like, we need to figure out a different business plan for you. I used to, talking about kind of your international realm, I used to work in microfinance and developing countries. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can answer this, but do you see any shift from kind of a microfinance over to crowdfunding with these female entrepreneurs? Because those were our primary candidates for a lot of the microfinance that we did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So it's so funny that you said that because um, Kiva, I know, is um, very similar in that. And they're actually also starting to pivot and shift a little bit too. Um, And they started last year that Jacqueline told me. I'm sorry. I'm like thinking about this conversation that I had. Anyway, but they also had this very recent kind of shift. We have seen a lot more nonprofits actually this year start coming into crowdfund. Um, And especially during COVID where they're trying to still seek funding and people are like, they're not just going for that high end donors. So I think the entire conversation around funding is really changing where those within those who understand the fundraising, it was like, you go and you find the wealthiest person you know to see if they could give you money. And now it's really about, honestly, we just need 10 to $15 from people and let's see how much we can raise. Um, so we're definitely seeing that shift. We're definitely seeing the nonprofits start to come in on board to crowdfund. Um, and then in terms of the, not, the other, like specifically um, microfinancing, it is starting to happen the hardest part about that is the network component. They don't necessarily have as great of a network. So we're still trying to work with that. Um, Gosh, 
I'm like, I can't say, yes, we are. Okay. I'm just like, yes. interested to see if there is a shift. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you this. We're really shifting it to work with, um, our goal right now with that specifically, I'll just go ahead and share this, is that we are trying to push those large corporations who, who do have the funds to say, we need to get this over to these women who actually have great ideas. They might not have the network, but let's get it over there. So we are trying to do that actively through our broker grants. Interesting. And one of the things that was great, like in microfinance is a group of women would come together to take a loan out and there was a sense of community around that. How does iFund women also help build that community if they do? Yeah, we do. Um, also the thing that I am working on <laughs> with iFund women, um, we have our Slack channel and we have so there's a few things. So we have the iPhone Women of Color, which was started in January. And this is specifically um, overseen by our head of partnerships. Her name is Olivia Owens. And our, she is amazing. But she came to iPhone Women and realized that we didn't have a space for women of color. And women of color, actually, especially Black women, only get to, um, they only are funded. I believe the statistic is something like, 0.0006% of those women get funded. And so we were like, well, that's an even more like problematic statistic. So we need to fix that as much as we can. So we created iFund Women of Color as a way for them to give them a community. They meet on a weekly basis. Um, they also get access to all of our webinars and workshops. And so iFund Women actually has um, weekly webinars um, and workshops that we have a library for them. And then um, it, with everybody else, we have a Slack group that anybody's able to join if you want to. Um, and it's free to do. And we can just start connecting with people across the world and different entrepreneurs. Fantastic. Our last question today is what is a good length for crowdfunding? One month, six weeks, What's the recommendation? Absolutely. So on average, there are 30 to 45 day campaigns. On iFund Women, we are a flexible platform. So what that looks like is that you do not actually have to reach your funding goal to get funded with us. And it means that if you experience something like COVID happens and you want to extend your campaign, you absolutely can with us. So it can actually mm. go on. We have a campaign that's been on there for, uh, I, I want to say like a year and they're still raising funds. Um, and then the last thing is because they're still raising funds for that time, we have made it so that you start getting the money trickled into your bank account from the first point of sale. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, right. Like we all want access to funds immediately and we don't want to wait the 30 to 45 days or that ch off chance that you go through a crowdfunding campaign and you're like, I didn't meet my goal. I'm a hundred dollars short. Like that's, horrible. So we didn't want that to happen. Yeah. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank You're going to you. be able to stay, stick around yeah. for a little bit and answer Absolutely. some questions. Fantastic. Absolutely. So thank you everybody for joining us. Next week, we're going to have David Pendergrass talk to us a little bit more about startup fundraising. So be sure and join us then. With that, we wish you a good weekend. Stay safe and well, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Christine.